Okay. So um, how do you find t at the end of the day, right? So um, how do you find the t? And not only that, how do you find the probability associated with that t? For instance, where t is greater than, you know, 2, right? How do you find these probabilities? We know how to do it for z. How do you do it for t? Well, one thing that you could do is you could look at the back of your book. Um, usually uh, in the appendix section, um, there's, there's something called the t distribution or the student's t distribution that you could look at. And oftentimes it'll tell you, um, it'll have degrees of freedom on one side, right? So degrees of freedom like two, three, four, five, right? All the way down. And then it'll show you either a one-tailed or two-tailed area. Like, um, so it might give you at uh, 0.25, 0 0.10, 0 0.05, 0 0.025, I'm running out of space, right? So it might give you these areas. And so the number right here tells you the t-score at that place. So like this. If you wanted to know where the 25% cutoff is, so maybe like this, right? Does that look like 25%? Maybe a little more, right? So if you want to know what this, what this t-score is for a degrees of freedom equals 2 distribution, then you would look right here. If you wanted to know it for, you know, 0.025, oh, I should have it here, 0.025, right? Then you would look here. Right? So you want to look for degrees of freedom as well as how much of the curve you're trying to um, cover or not cover. Right? Okay, so that's definitely one way you could do it. The other way you could do it is by using Excel. Uh, just like how Excel will help you find um, probabilities and z-scores for the normal standardized normal distribution, um, you could also find it in Excel for the t-distribution. But it needs a couple of... Uh, couple of hints. Um, so let's start off, actually let's start off with t-dist. So t-dist is the case where you want to find the probability, but you have everything else, right? And what the t-dist will do is if you put in the degrees of freedom, right, degrees of freedom, and you put in the actual x value, um, you could think of the x value as the t value, and it'll only take positive t values. Um, so for instance, a t value of 1, let's say. Right? So these are my t values. Um, and the number of tails, if you want it if you want this entire area, or if you just want that area alone, right? Um, so you could either put in 1 or 2. Then it'll give you the probability of this area. So um, I can show you right here. So let's put in t dist, oops, t dist for um, t of 1, let's say. Comma, and degree of free, uh, degrees of freedom two, and uh, let's let's look at what it might say for two tails. It'll say forty two percent, and um, if you look at this exact same thing, but if you look at it for one tail, it'll just divide this area in half. Right? So 21%, 42%. It makes sense, right? And basically, this is giving you this area plus this area if you want two tailed. But if you only want one tailed, it'll just give you this area, right? So um, let's say we want to know. So um, we know that for 95% uh, confidence intervals, um, we often use a Z score of 1.96. And that will give us a tail of 0.025, or if we count two tails, it'll be 5%. Let's see what this gives us for 1.96 when we have a, dis, uh, a degrees of freedom of only two. So t dist, 1.96. 
So let's put in 1.96, right? If, if we put that in our z-score, we would get, you know, only, um, if we put in two tails, we'd only get 5%, but let's see what we get here. Uh, degrees of freedom, oh, degrees of freedom, two. And number of tails, let's put in two, right? Do you think this should be more or less than 5%? Well, let's think about this. Remember, the t distribution is like slightly smushed, so it's more spread out, right? It's more variable. And because of that, it's going to have these longer tails, right? So it's not going to be nice and, you know, all compact in the middle. It's going to be sort of spread out. So we would imagine that it would have a fat tail. So I would say more than 5%. Let's see. Ah. And we see that it's almost 20% at, um, at t of 1.96, right? But let's put that same z-score in, right? So um, norms dist, right? Dist is whenever we want the probability and put in 1.96. Oh, uh, and, and we forget. Here, here we get the negative side. So we'd want 1 minus. And this gives us just one tail. So I'm going to change this to one tail so we could look at it. OK, so here on one of our tails, one side of it, it's almost 9.5%. It's still out there. But when we use z-score, only 2.5% is still out there, right? OK, so but let's look at this same t distribution for a very, very high um, degrees of freedom. Let's try, well, let's try 60. That's sort of like medium, right? Let's try 60. Ah, even with something like 60, we're starting to get very, very close to the Z distribution. But still, this guy is more variable than the Z distribution. Let's see if we could go even higher. So instead of 60, I'm going to put in 120 degrees of freedom of 120. And notice, we're getting closer and closer, but still, these are more variable than these, right? So let's go a little nuts. Let's put in like 1,000, right? See what happens there. Ah, we're getting super, super close, but still slightly more variable, right? So that's a good principle for us to know. The t distribution, although it approximates normal, it approximates it from one side. So here's the normal distribution standard. It's uh, 0 0.02499, right? There it is. And it's getting closer and closer to it, but it's approaching it from the high end, right? So these numbers are dropping, 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 and getting really close to that but not quite hitting it. OK. All right. So now you know how to get the probabilities. But what if you have the probability and you want to find the t-score? What would you do? In this case, you would use the inverse, t-inv for inverse. Here, um, you would put in the two-tailed probability. So let's say we want to know, OK, what is the, the t-boundary uh, for if we wanted only 5% in our tails, right? So here's the situation I'm talking about for this one. So I'll draw it down here. So we have this distribution. And we know we want these to be 0.025, just like you know a z distribution. We want it to be 0.025. But we want to know what these numbers are here, right? We want to know what these numbers are. Well, it depends on your degrees of freedom, right? So let's try degrees of freedom of 2, 60, 120, and 1,000, right? OK. So let me, let me label this a bit. So here we get the probabilities um, from t dist, and here are the probabilities from standardized normal distribution, or the z distribution. OK, so now we don't want the probabilities. We actually want the t, the, the t boundaries themselves. 
and the Z boundaries themselves. So if we wanted the Z boundary at um, 0.025 or you know at 5%, we would use norms in, right? And we'd put in our probability. I forget if it's one-tailed or two-tailed. Let's try one-tailed. Ah, it's not one-tailed. We would need two-tailed. 0.025. And we get very, very close to uh, negative 1.96, right? We, we had you guys just memorize that, right? But that's why. Um, this is saying uh, at negative 1.96, you have about 2.5% in that little tail. Now, what about the T? Um, now, in Excel, it's sort of inconsistent because for Z, it gives it to you uh, on the negative side. For the T, it only gives it to you for the positive side, so it's sort of confusing. But I often don't memorize that. I just try out a couple of things until it sort of spits out the thing I'm looking for. Um, but it, you have to sort of understand how these things work so that you could predict you know, what's going on. Um, Okay, so we'll use T inverse, right? And we want to know the probability. Um, I believe this is going to be two-tailed, so 0.05, and degrees of freedom, let's say two. And we get, uh, we get, oh, we get a point, O5 and degrees of freedom, just to test whether this is one-tailed or two-tailed, let me put that in. Ah, I believe you have to give it two tails. Right, okay. So you have to put in the two-tailed probability here. So that's 0.05 and then the degrees of freedom, two, right? And this will give us these boundaries. So it'll only give us the positive boundary, but because it's symmetrical, you automatically know the, the other side, right? So this would give us a boundary of 4.3. So remember, for a z-score, this boundary would be 1.96. But for a t-distribution with a degree of freedom of 2, this would be 4.3. That's quite high. Because remember, it's really spread out. You've got to go way out far in order to get just that 2%. Ah, but what about degrees of freedom, uh, what about the, this boundary for uh, degrees of freedom of 60? What do we get then? Ah, we get something very close to 1.96, but it's a little bigger than 1.96. Remember, because, because the T distribution is more variable, you have to go farther out there in order to capture just that small amount of 0.025%. I mean, uh, 2.5% or 0.025. And if we go to 120, what we should expect is that boundary to come closer and closer to 1.96 from the big side, but not quite hit 1.96, or more closely, uh, 1.9599. Yeah, so we're getting close to that 1.96 number, but still, it's, it's a little bit higher. And finally, when we just go buck wild and put in degrees of freedom of 1,000, we get something very close to 1.96, but still a little bit higher than 1.96. So those are two different ways that you could find the T as well as the probability that that T is associated with. But you always have to remember the degrees of freedom. And um, ah, I even put it here, two-tailed probability. Um, and you have to know the, um, whether you want two-tailed probability or one-tailed probability um, as well as your degrees of freedom. So that's what you'll have to know in order to, do, um, to look things up on a T distribution. Okay, so now let's go do some examples. So in each of these situations, which distribution do you use, the Z or the T? Um, if there are 500 million people on Facebook, how many people have fewer friends than Diana, who has 490 friends? Assume that the number of friends on Facebook is normally distributed. Aha, and here they give you the sigma. So we know that you could use the Z distribution here.
Uh, here, the researchers want to compare a given sample of Facebook users' average number of friends, 25, to the entire population. What proportion of sample means will be equal or greater than uh, the mean of this group? Right? Um, N equals 25, but the mean is 580. So they have five, an average of 580 friends. Well, um, here, I definitely wouldn't use, uh, I wouldn't necessarily use Z, but then I also don't have the standard deviation. So maybe this, this is connected to this previous problem. If so, if, I assume that they come from, oh, yes, I see, the whole population. And they give us the information for the whole population here. Um, if, you know, sigma equals 100, then I'll use Z, right? So this one, I probably left out some information. All right. So what about this last one? Researchers want to know uh, the 95% confidence interval for tagged photos, given that a sample of 32 people have an average of 185 tagged photos and a standard deviation of 112. Here, it's very clear. Since I know S, right, I know S, but I don't know the sigma for tagged photos, right? I only know the sigma for friends, but not for tagged photos. In this case, what I would do is use the T distribution because I'll probably have to estimate the population standard deviation from the sample standard deviation. 